This company's had three CEOs. They're all right here. This is all. A decade ago, a little known engineering executive named Satya Nadella was announced as the new CEO of Microsoft. And I cannot be more honored, more humbled, and more excited about Microsoft. Than I he was not an obvious choice. Nadella was an insider at a company that had become too insular, a humble and professorial presence. Be able to integrate data which exists on a host or a mainframe. After CEOs known for being mercenary. You make a grown man cry. And bombastic. I can't hear you! And yet, 10 years later, Microsoft is neck and neck with Apple for the title of world's most valuable company with a market capitalization right around $3 trillion. Some perspective. That means Microsoft today is worth 10 times more than the day Nadella got the job. Along the way, Nadella's changed more than Microsoft's stock price. In 10 years, he's gone from an unknown quantity to one of the most respected CEOs in the game, balancing roles as engineering leader Hi, Aya. and technology diplomat. Today we are making the commitment that by 2030, Microsoft will be carbon negative. He's also brought Microsoft from being a laggard in search and mobile to being a challenger in the cloud and an emerging leader in AI. And so our job number one is to build the best system so that you can build the best models. In the process, he shifted the market perspective on how a CEO communicates about mission, mission competition, competition, and partnership. partnership. There's no holding back of anything. It is about being able to excel everywhere our customers are. I've been covering Microsoft and Satya the whole way, interviewing him nearly a dozen times. At this milestone, I'm unpacking his uniquely challenging journey to the top of tech and the new obstacles and opportunities in a world where rivals and governments are wary of Nadella's Microsoft getting even bigger. Could a small player win today in this space? Could. Cool. You know, it all depends on what happens, right? Which is what's the product market fit that one of these folks finds? Safri is about to name you CEO right there. Real quick. <laughs> I first interviewed Satya Nadella on camera in 2013. Back then, he was one of several division presidents at a Microsoft fumbling to find its footing. He didn't even have one of the divisions everyone externally was focused on, Office or Mobile, Search or Xbox. He ran Server and Tools. This is Windows Server and System Center and everything else with this Azure secret sauce inside. I'm getting word in my ear that Steve Ballmer of Microsoft is to retire. Wow. John Fort, uh, who knows the company well, is on the phone with us. John, what's your take? A few months later, after Steve Ballmer announced he was stepping down as CEO, I pressed Nadella on whether he wanted the job. Would you take the job if it's offered? You know, the Microsoft board, as you said, is working the process. Steve's very much the CEO. I am really, really busy and excited about the enterprise job that I have, and I'll leave it at that. In one of my recent conversations with Nadella, he reflected on those times and how he's trying to keep Microsoft's sense of urgency and focus now that many perceive it to be riding high. We've known each other for a long time, <laughs> long before I became CEO. Um, you know, I think, John, when I think about, you know, whatever, the last 10 years, the most challenging always for a company like ours and, and in a role like mine is to really have a sense um, that you're grounded on two things. Um, because I feel you have to sort of have that sense of purpose and mission as a company. Uh, be real. It can't be this abstract thing because, you know, especially when you're successful, uh, what happens is you forget, like, what made you successful. And uh, so, therefore, grounding yourself in a sense of purpose and mission, that's the first thing I did, I think, 10 years ago, is to say, look, it's a, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Saying it is one thing, but making it real every day in terms of the products we build, the markets we serve, the attitude we all have uh, with our partners and customers. That's been the hard, hard struggle. The other one is culture, uh, right? I, I distinctly remember when we became the largest market cap company in the late 90s, you know, walking around the campus, you know, including me, thinking, God, we must be God's gifts to sort of mankind. And except, you know, that's the day you think that is when you should be scared because uh, ultimately companies um, really have to be grounded on that we are only going to be successful if we can meet those unmet, unarticulated needs of customers, that means you can't be know-it-alls, but you have to be learn-it-alls. So you don't think that now? Because now you're the second largest. <laughs> yeah, that's right? right. It's always great to the, be second largest. I mean, There's a lot more to be learned. But you're pretty close. You're pretty close. But quite honestly, it's not, you know, it's framing uh, 
that learn it all versus the know it all, right? Mm -hmm. Because what came before, like today it'd be maybe whatever, uh, whether it's the stock or the market cap or what have you, but tomorrow, it's no guarantees. And especially in tech, there's no franchise value. I, that's kind of, I remind <laughs> myself of this as nothing lasts forever. Um, and so, and we've been through, you know, some dark times on that and back. And so therefore I am more grounded perhaps than that. Um, so therefore I always am looking for saying, okay, what's next? Uh, and can we build enough capability and conceptual understanding of what's next inside the company long before it's conventional wisdom? Quite honestly, by the time you ask me about something, if I'm like saying, what is he talking about? Then it's all over. No one thinks it's all over now. So how did Microsoft get here? Well, the first thing to understand is Nadella reset popular assumptions about how a tech CEO competes. <laughs> The decade before Satya Nadella took over at Microsoft was a decade of decline. The company had seemed unstoppable after the 1992 release of Windows 3.1. In this video, you're going to see the future. When Microsoft seized and dominated the PC and early web browser markets, crushing Apple and Netscape. But after the Justice Department sued and nearly broke up the company, Microsoft lost its equilibrium. In the new millennium, after the dot-com bust, new powers rose as Microsoft foundered. Jeff Bezos and Eric Schmidt conquered the web with logistics and search. A thousand songs is mind-blowing, but iPod's even more than music. Steve Jobs reinvented mobile and media with the iPod and iTunes. And open source technology, a grassroots movement from software developers, rewrote the rules of how business software is created. Microsoft's previous CEOs had considered this a battle for every screen. To take on Google, they invented Bing and tried to buy Yahoo. To take on Apple's iPod and iPhone, they invented the Zune and bought Nokia. None of it worked. We want to empower every individual and every organization to be able to thrive in this mobile-first, cloud-first world. Nadella's new approach? Instead of trying to beat other platforms, he embraced them as a home for Microsoft Office. And instead of undercutting open source software, he vowed to make it work better on Microsoft's cloud. It was part of a broader strategy to work better with partners. If you look at cloud, AI, and the Open Data Initiative, the idea that even a small business in Indonesia can now use SAP, Adobe, and Microsoft to become that much more efficient is the real opportunity. At the same time, he modeled a rare approachability, particularly for Microsoft's old culture, where the smartest person in the room had license to become the most powerful, and the most powerful had license to be a jerk. It doesn't mean we have to agree on everything all the time, but let's have a rich dialogue, let's have that empathy for the other person's point of view. That is, I think, what has made America what it is today, and let us make sure we don't trade that off. Now, in 2024, a new Microsoft. After more than $140 billion in acquisitions and reshaping the business model, the next challenge looms for Satya Nadella. This era, it's the partnership between Microsoft and OpenAI. Can he navigate the AI transition as well as he navigated the cloud? We definitely want the benefits of this technology and we want to mitigate the unintended consequences. The leadership that's required and the coming together of all the parties that is required is challenging, but it has to be done. If he succeeds, he might just extend this rare run. Hitting refresh on Microsoft. Has the new element on the page loaded yet? Or are we still waiting? <laughs> we as individuals are dealing with change all the time. And we're hitting refresh. We learn from it. And cement his legacy as Microsoft's third, but not necessarily third best, CEO. If you look at what specifically can Microsoft do, I think our best days are ahead of us because it's a software-powered world.